Every year, 200,000 people develop blindness while undergoing surgeries or a trauma to the eye. There are one million people have encephalitis in this country. Out of them, one third die, one third develop paralysis. Two million people suffer from sepsis in this country and 48% of them generally die. Even those who survive do not survive happily. They have either kidney damages, liver damages, lung damages or arthritis. 40% of all deaths in the newborns is due to sepsis. Why is this? We probably think, well, we are a poor country, we can have it. We are a warm country, so we have more infection. But definitely, infection is a particular problem of this country and we need to accept it as our problem. And that we have not done so far. The problem is, we have too much infection and too much misery that comes out of these serious infections. They lead to death and a lot of disability. That somehow doesn't come to the public health forums at all. For some reason, we ignore it. The management of infection, there is certain amount of a level of callousness amongst all of us. I have heard the following arguments. Why should I know what causes sepsis? I have broad spectrum antibiotics. That has led today to place India on the world map of drug resistance. It's our own doing. Is it that there is no way to diagnose these infections? That's not what I am saying. But these are not adequate. Let me explain. We have, for bacteria and fungi, we have culture systems. And these are very automated cultures. They are available now quite widely in this country. Two, we have got, for a whole lot of viruses, we have got virus cultures, though the infrastructure is very poor, and it's only in exclusively some few places like Nimhans and in National Institute of Virology and All India Institute of Medical Sciences. It is not widely prevalent, but there are other substitute diagnostics that have come like PCR. We have also got immunodiagnostics, though they don't play any role in a critical infection, they are there. The imaging gives where the infection is, but not what the infection is. We require a notch up. So we said, why not we do something new, something that is useful to the clinician, but uses genomics, which is a very complicated science, but in a smart and very miraculously simplified way. And that belief system led to a whole lot of research in Exciton, and that led to an invention of SES. What are our priorities for the diagnosis of infections? I think on the top of the list is CNS infections or central nervous system infections or otherwise you can call them brain infections. Why so? If you don't diagnose it and properly treat it, it, it can lead to paralysis, sensory loss, permanent epilepsy, mental retardation in children, eye infections which causes blindness. Infections of the transplant patients, you have spent millions of rupees and now an infection enters and kills this person. You conquered cancer, probably you treated with surgery or you treated with chemotherapy. His immune system has come down, he becomes infected with one or two viruses and that takes over the body and kills him. Bloodstream infections, which of course occur in both transplant patients as well as cancer patients, but this is sepsis. But the bloodstream infections of the newborn babies is the greatest misery. If you actually diagnose these cases precisely on the day one, you can actually prevent all the disabilities, you can prevent deaths. And that belief system led to a whole lot of research in Exciton. The syndrome evaluation system is a simple looking technology marvel. In fact, this simple looking device hides an exhaustive understanding of all the pathogens and their pathogenesis in causing these life-threatening infections. It also hides what we understood about virulent genes of these pathogens and how to amplify them, how to identify them by hybridization and in the whole designing and the technological complexities, it just hides all of them. At the end of the day, it's a simple process by which you come to know which pathogen among 30 or 26 is there in that sample. You can identify the causative agent. The doctor knows what pathogen is there. He just found something, he can treat it. If he had found nothing, he can simply go ahead and look beyond infection. Imagine no blindness is due to surgeries. Imagine all cancer patients after cancer treatment go home. Imagine a transplant patient and the donor feeling very happy because they went home and he's living a normal life. 
Imagine all sepsis patients walking out of hospitals. Imagine encephalitis epidemics being reported in newspaper. But we are also saying no children are damaged, nobody died. And that's exactly is the end game of the entire SES. And that is what the entire team which toiled and had tears and tribulations throughout this period want. That's exactly is the end point of this, nothing else.